God does not need man's intervention. God does not need man's wisdom. When one has a sincere heart, your prayer will be sincere. Your prayer will depend upon the Holy Spirit. So none of us have an excuse. None whatsoever. Right? God speaks to each one of us. Right? Yes. Through dreams, visions, um, through the word come up, through the word over the pulpit. Uh, through human beings, you can say whatever you want to say about God. You can. You cannot change. Some people, you know, some people say, "Oh well, oh you know, here you could change." No, He's the same as mm -hmm. yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. right? Only we change. Yes. Universe change. The cosmos change, but not God. Right? And no. also, right, and also, we touch on. Remember last time on. On this prayer with uh, First Timothy, he say, there for there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. First Kings eighteen and twenty one to forty one, which in your time you will read. But we are zeroing on thirty six. Verse thirty six. Do have it there with you? Verse thirty six. At the unusual sign. For offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. But let it be simple that you yourself can understand and walk in it don't try to, yes. to, to try to be eloquent as Paul told them you want to be so eloquent in your words and you, you don't even understand or, or define some words Elisha pray same say oh Lord okay he understand who God is so his prayer was directed to God right? And he understand that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, the God of his uh, of, and Israel. He understand that. So when we understand something, it causes us to walk in it. If the Spirit of God does not bring the understanding or the revelation that we need to walk in, therefore we cannot walk in it. So don't try to to put in words. And your own meaning and your own understanding because you're going to mess up the prayer. You're going to mess yourself up. Because you'll be bringing all sorts of gods into your prayer. So you let them know that the God he served is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Israel. No other God. And we know in that time there were many gods people were praying to. Huh? Oh, yeah. Many, many gods. All right. There's so many that they are not. That's so much. I think God was just rising up in, every day. They, uh, they even pray to the unknown world. Unknown. <laughs> and yet, and, and they are, and that is still happening. The unknown God. A God they don't even know. But if you notice, He know His God. So when you know yeah. your God, you could. Show off your God in every situation. Here he show off his God before them, right? With the fire. So let's go into today's um, teaching, and we're talking about a sincere prayer. First Samuel seventeen forty-seven. First Samuel seventeen forty-seven. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescue his people. But not with sword, sword and spear. Mm. This is the Lord's battle, and He will give you to us. <laughs> this is the Lord's battle, right? So, but we have, now we have to understand 
Does if does every battle be the Lord? Mm. <laughs> All right. That's I mean. Sometimes we have to Lord because most because sometimes or most of the times we leave out God, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. and we go in with our strength. We go in with our own understanding, right? just as the the Philistine because they had a big a big you know a giant, right. And because they have killed so much, they go on their own strength, right? Mm-hmm. But here we see David said to the Philistine in verse 45, You come to me with a sword and with spear and with javelin. One, two, three. Do you know, do you know a sword, right? It's have a blade, right? To cut. Each yeah. one of them have a blade to cut, <laughs> a sword. And you look at that, right? A sword is always the cutting, right? Or or trusting weapon that has a long metal blade and a hit with a hand guard. That's a sword. A spear, right? Is also a weapon. A spear, yeah. what is long? Normally, it's trusted a weapon with a sharp point. Nice too. A javelin. Right? A javelin, I said, is a, an uncertain type of weapon that was similar to a spear and a javelin, though perhaps shorter. Right? Shorter. But they have one thing in common is what? A point. Yes, a sharp edge. Yeah. A sharp edge. So they come with, with all this. You come with your sword and spear with a sharp edge. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom you yeah. have defied. Mm. Whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the head bodies to the host of the Philistine. All right. Yes. Sincere prayer. What is sincere prayer? John Bynon um, wrote says, uh, sincere prayer, okay, he says, hallelujah, is pouring out of your heart, of your soul to God. Okay. You know, watch, point out your heart and your soul to God while the Holy Spirit gives you strength. He's the assistant. He gives you strength. All right? We are to tell God, you know, what is inside of us. So, sense of prayer essentially is a characteristic of true prayer. All right? Mm-hmm. Let's go uh, into one or two scriptures because this is we, when we get the Word of God as SOW, we always go into the Word. And let the Spirit of God help us. All right. I'll read it because it's so much. Um, Joshua Joshua 24, 14 says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the and serve the Lord. So we see here. As we say, sincere prayer is a prayer of truthfulness, right? Pouring out of your heart to God, right? And as we read in Joshua 24, right? He says, serve, fear the Lord, one, fear the Lord, and serve Him with sincerity and in faithfulness. So if we mm-hmm. have the fear of the Lord, there must be faithfulness also. Yes. Okay. Fearing the Lord means giving God home. It's giving God due unto Him. Right? He's holy. And hear what He says going on. And put away the gods that your fathers. Right? So, if you are still holding on to your father's God, then for there is no sincerity and faithfulness. Hmm. Because many times we, we come to prayer... And we say, oh, yes, uh, uh, you know, I'm the Lord's servant. Not knowing you are serving the next God. 
So how can we serve to God or to masters at the same time? So he admonished them, right? Fail God, serve him with sincerity of heart and faithfulness. And also he's tell them there's something you got to do. Yes. Right. You cannot just come to prayer meeting with all these gods within you and still want to serve God. Right. You want to mix God, you want to mix holiness with what? Dirt, holiness with evil, darkness, dark works. Have you ever heard some people say, oh, I love God, I love but you see them with your own eyes doing things of darkness. And they say, well, God knows. There are some things that we have to do. We have to search within ourselves and get rid of these things that is within us, that is holding us back from moving on. She said, put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river. So, so it tells me that they too were serving gods. Yeah? Because tradition, well, my mother used to do this, or my father used to use this, so we incorporate what they do to enhance or to get more power. As we will say, God does not need man's intervention. God does not need man's wisdom. So when we incorporate these other gods, we are telling God, we come to help you. Yeah. Because you can't do it by yourself. But when one has a sincere heart, your prayer will be sincere. Your prayer will be, will be depending upon the Holy Spirit. No one else. That's why I said when we come to prayer, begin to exalt God, begin to worship God. Let set your mind, set your, your heart, your soul. Point out to God. God knows. He knows what you have been through. Through the years, what you have been through, even the the hour before prayer meeting. He knows. But once we pour it out, he said, yes, that's my servant. So Elisha, he said, I'm your servant. Okay? Yes. In First Samuel. Where he said, and all that the assembly may know that the Lord saved not with sword and spear, but the battle belongs to the Lord. Yes. So Elisha meant that God is working for you. Yes. When we have a sincere heart, poised to God, God works on our behalf. Oh, yes, he does. Works on yes. our behalf. So even though they may come with so much of weapon, yes, sophisticated weapon now, they have those Machines now don't have no spears like now. I'm like years ago. Right? But God, when God sees a heart that is poised to him, that is unto him, God will work will. for you. But our hearts cannot be divided in, in God and 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 on uh, 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 ungodliness. Put away. I'm like Paul always talking about put away. Get rid of these things that is holding you back. All of us are things within us. But when we go before God, God, help me, I'm struggling. Be real. Lord, many times I'm finding myself back into the same thing over and over. God, help me. He will give us a strength. As Paul says, in my weakness, he's my strength. Mm. He's my strength. Acts 2, 46 says, And the day 
and day by day attending the, the uh, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes they received their food with gladness and generosity okay when we attend more and more into the word of god there is a a, a, a gratefulness rise up within you there is strength rise up within you say man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god so when one is poised and, and receiving the word of god every day your prayer would not be hypocritical hmm. Hmm. many times we have witnessed and many times it's still going on hypocritical that's why people on the world say they're hypocrites you know i'm telling you i'm telling you they see they see you only play in church but then we're hypocrites but when one is staying in the presence of god with a sincere heart a sincere prayer it would not be hypocrite it would be sincere unto god philippians 1 10 say so that you may prove what is excellent hallelujah Let's go into that. You can turn your book here into uh, to uh, Philippians one, one, Philippians chapter one, verse ten. I'll read for you. Hallelujah. Or we're going to close up in that area. Hallelujah. You to understand mm -hmm. what really matters, so you may live pure mm -hmm. and be blameless mm -hmm. life until the day of Christ return. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my God. Go to verse go to verse eight and read from verse eight. Hallelujah. Because remember we, we are looking at you know Paul, right? He always concerned and always have a prayer and always looking out for you know the church. But he cannot look out or pray for the church with a, a hypocritical prayer being hypocrite no can't be sincere so verse eight it it reads god knows how much i love you and long for you with the tender compassion of christ jesus right okay. so how he know that god <laughs> right how he know that god always yearned you see well, you say for god is my witness how i yearn so he he uh, address God and he let them know even if he have no witness God is my witness right so Paul by spending time because remember he was given the gospel God entrusted him with the gospel so therefore he always have interaction communication with God the Holy Spirit, right? He depend. So if they have any doubt, because if you go if you go up further, right? He said, "It is right for me to, to it is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart. For you all are partakers of my grace, both in my in prison and all that, okay? And even though they say, I thank God for." I thank I thank my God in all memory, verse three, for of you always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership. Okay. And verse seven. Okay, we are, okay, imprisonment. For God is my witness. Right? Truth always stands by itself. So whether you believe Paul or not. He said, God is my witness. Huh? Because he knows that God always sees and knows all things. And he knows that God calls him to spread the gospel, the truth. Yeah. Right? The truth. So Paul could not mention and say, God is my witness unless 
he has the truth of God in him. Right? Sometimes people put between God, as I say, and they're nowhere near to have God between them. So what he's letting them know, it came from God, not him, it came from God. And God entrusts him with the gospel of truth. Right? And because he had his heart and his soul hoist to God with a sincere, right? He said, How I yearn for you with affliction, I mean affection. Right? Affection, love. He always loved his people, the church. Right? And in my prayer that your love may abound. So he has a yearning, he has love within him since his heart and his, his, his affection towards them. And also he prayed for them that their love will grow. Because some people have love, but it cannot grow. So it's what happening there. He said, I pray my prayer that your love may abound more and more. Some people say love, but only, it only reach a certain distance. Yes. Because why? They put a barrier around. They have mm -hmm. limits. I only love you because you have something for me. I only love you because you look out for my family, though. But the minute you make a mistake, the minute you fall, <laughs> oh, I don't them. I I know they they're no good, but all the time, I love them. But he pray that their love may abound more and more. Come on, something missing with knowledge. So you can have love, but you have no knowledge. You, yes, you have love, but who love? Who knowledge? Right? And we know that a personal knowledge is rec recognition. It coming to understand something which is clear, clearly. Okay? And distinctively or as a truth and valid. Okay? Or it could be positive or negative. So he said more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent. What is excellent. Oh my God. Read that verse because I feel your, your, your translation might be a little different. Read it. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Okay. Verse 10. Verse 10. For I want you to understand mm. what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless. Mm. Live until the day of Christ's return. Mm. Hallelujah. And, and uh, if I could permission to put yes, in yes, 11. Yes, 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 put in 11, yes. Thank you. May you always be filled mm. with the fruit of your salvation glory the righteousness character mm. produced in you mm. in your life by jesus christ for this will bring much glory mm. and praise to god i'll tell you something you know uh, i remember when uh you know, uh, no came into the kingdom of god and you know they, they were teaching us about this you know for salvation for your friends you know yeah. Those that have called, you know, are coming to the kingdom of God, right? And we, pray, you know, we pray this prayer. It's very powerful, you know. Uh, so that you know, I, it is my prayer that your love, because all of us have love. But earlier I said your love could just only go a, a short distance, or our love could just only for material things, or our love is just only for what you, you know, what you want. Right. But see, your love may be more, may abound more and more with knowledge and with all discernment. We talk about discernment. We're talking. We're talking about. We understand in discernment, right? Perception. 
right? Discernment is yeah. really a, a mental ability to understand or to discriminate between relation, especially with acquiring through experience. Everything. So that you may approve. Says here, when you're talking about approve, understanding approve is to judge or to be right, right? Or think okay. well. Think well. God gave us a mind. And when we pray, okay. we must have this mind of Christ, that we mm -hmm. say. Right? What is excellent? Superior to become a greater quality of value. Yes. Right. I, um, I, I, you know, as I'm going on there, I always had to put in what I go through the day or through the week or who I really, you know, talk to. Very important. I say, listen, you are a person of value. Yes, yes. A person of value. And many times we sell ourselves short. Mm. Because we don't understand or have the knowledge of discernment of who we are. Yes. So we give up everything. It comes like it comes like the, the, the twins that were fighting in a, in the womb, right? For the porridge, okay, okay. right? Yeah. Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. Right? Sell is birthright. So we sell what we have inside that to make us great and to make us walk for something else that will make us dumb. Mm -hmm. So we say, prove what's excellent and so to be pure, talking about sincerity. Yeah. Be honest. You know, these days I, I mm -hmm. always tell people, be honest. You don't have to lie. Be honest. Be straightforward. Be honest. In your attitude, in your speech. Be honest. And this is what in prayer. Be honest. Because if you notice, we put here, so that you be pure and blameless. And blameless, yes. Right? Not pumping or sinning by one's action or lifestyle. So some of the things we have to do. Hmm. All this we have to do. Fill with the fruits of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. Yes. To the glory and the praise of God. So as we're about to close. Right? Your sincere prayer. Let your prayer be honest. And one, you know, hmm. let your prayer be true. Let your prayer be pure. Yeah. Let your speech be unto God. Hallelujah. Blameless. Mm 